It's the Jim Fannin Show. We've come to take your mind. Am I still on? earlier with no audio a full half hour pre-recorded all touched up nicey nice way to go jimmy <laughs> there is no audio welcome aboard this is jim fennin show i'm probably live on absolutely no platforms now but i'm recording so there's that and what did I do just shut down the Ryan just walked out of the production room on Gavin McInnes because his wife's water broke he begged him to stay but it did not work this is Colin Kaepernick Colin Kaepernick is a race baiting rich white guy yes he's as white as he is black but he only plays up the black part of it because well that's the only way you can claim that you're oppressed. So we're going to talk about Mr. Kaepernick today. And I'm going to have all kinds of technical issues as I go. My mouse is already not working. Good. Okay, here we go. Let's hold that steady. It looks like my connection is balls. I've got red, so that's not going to work out very well. Mm -hmm. And this is going to go badly. But we're going to muscle through. I'm back, and this is Colin Kaepernick. He is, um, as I said earlier, a rich white race baiter, and he's comparing the NFL to uh, modern day slavery, or old school slavery actually. Before they put you on the field, Teams poke, prod, and examine you. Yes, NFL teams poke, prod, and examine you because they want to make sure that you have the physical ability to cash the checks for them. Okay, they want to make sure that you have the physical ability to perform on the field so they can make money from you and they can make you rich as a black man. That is wearing, strangely enough, a, like a female 70s afro. This is, men did not wear afros like this. Women did. <laughs> this is disturbing, but I had to watch it, so you have to watch it. Searching for any defect that might affect your performance. Yes, they are searching for defects because they want you to perform. Period. It's a business call-in. No boundary respected. No dignity left intact. How is poking, prodding, and checking for physical deficiencies, breaking your boundaries, or somehow destroying your dignity? Colin, get some jerry curl, bro. When's the last time a white man called a black man, boy, come on, boy, hurry up. Look at that sheep there, boy. Look at that sheep there. Look at this. Mr. Farmer, I got your beard. Dirty, dang. 
30. 30 to you. 30 to you, James. Wow, that's big dough. 30. Wow. 30 to you. 100. 100. Next one coming up, we got the best one. Ooh, 500. I wonder how much Colin Kaepernick will get today. 600. Right here. Okay, so you, you see what they're doing here. Like, this is just so sad and pathetic. But this is 2021. And this is what you get. Black Lives Matter lies right in your face all day, all night, 24-7. You love it, don't you? for these videos I wonder in the NFL who would subject themselves to Colin Kaepernick's rage here's Cap right here he's got his own little video he put out today I um, trolled him with a comment okay so here we're gonna we're gonna talk about um, black people that the white people like Huey Newton, Ida B. Wells, Toni Morrison, Fannie Lou Hamer. White people love these dudes. Ar archetypal black type. Over the years, well, might as well start from the there have been some very popular TV shows starring black people. These shows. Yeah, speaking of this, and what the fuck are you doing? Are you shooting a video or are you eating popcorn? Like, what the, what's the play here? You're a cool black man in a black turtleneck with a big fat fucking afro. And you're eating a bowl of popcorn? What? And popcorn's white, dude. What the hell? Do one or the other. Shoot a damn movie or eat your popcorn. Who thought this was a good idea? No share archetypal black characters. Archetypal black characters. I don't know, like the Cosby Show? It was one of my favorites when I was a kid. What, the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? One of my favorites? What? We, we, you can't like these things? What are you talking about, Willis? Different strokes? <laughs> Almost all black cast, but what? we're not allowed to like these guys now? Why, Colin? Tell us, please. Including social outcasts who assimilate or conform, like Carlton Banks. Who thought that shot was a good idea? Laying on a bench with your feet up. That's so gay. Steve Urkel. Wow. Listen, listen, don't fuck with Urkel. I was not a, a huge fan of Urkel, but now I like him. Now that you're saying we shouldn't like him, now he's one of my favorites. Cap. Got some real people here. White people love these dudes. Yeah, we love these dudes. So what? It was good programming, dude. Well, I didn't watch the Urkel show, whatever that was, thing was called, but I watched the other ones. Everything from the way they dress way they talk you're our man even the way they dance it's also non-threatening james spurlock we call him two because with him you get a two for one he's a black guy and a harvard guy these characters have come to be known by the term acceptable negro they've become known as acceptable negroes what who the hell is calling any black guy an acceptable negro dude you're so fucking far off base it's not funny but what have we what, well, it's 2021, and this is what you get. The acceptable Negro is a black character who inhabits white characteristics. What you talking about, Willis? Yeah, chewing on camera, never a good idea, Cap. Netflix, watch yourself. Who makes white people feel comfortable. The acceptable Negro is a white man's creation. Uh, no, it's your creation, Colin. You just created it now. The acceptable Negro. You're the disrespect. <laughs> You're the unacceptable Negro. <laughs> Thing is, white people don't get to decide who's acceptable to us. Uh, listen, you're as white as you are a black, Colin. Your mother was white. Your father was black. He abandoned you when you were a child. You grew up in a white home. In, well, we'll get into where you grew up grew up in a white home, in a white city, in a white state, in a white school. 
You might as well be white, Colin. You're as white as you are black. You're 50-50. What do you got to focus on the black part for? Because it's financially convenient. We can rock with Steve Urkel and Steve Biko and Marcus Garvey, Huey Newton, Ida B. Wells. Yeah, yeah, who cares? Tony yeah, you don't care. I'm getting some bad broadband here. Uh, he's going after Steve Urkel. Here's who Colin Kaepernick is styling his hair after. This girl right here. Wow, that is some fro. I just Googled uh, when we was that was. Uh, the links are in the uh, show description. This is what Colin Kaepernick is going for right here. Dude, stop it. Ooh, that's hot. <whistles> wow. And on another note, uh, here's the last Nike commercial that they put out uh, in 2018. They haven't used Colin for a long time. Why? Because uh, he likes life on his knees. If you have only one hand, don't just watch football. Play. And if you're a girl... Oh, virtue signaling garbage. In 20, tw 2011, the NFL draft, uh, Colin Kaepernick continues to impress scouts. This is March 24th, 2011. He's six foot six. He was on target all day, completing 36 of his 38 passes. Well, easy to do at the combine or whatever the pro day is. <laughs> oh, boy. He did a 4.5340. That's impressive. He's a big dude. And he did all right for a little while, but then he blew up in a bad way. And here's an article from June 4th, 2014. Colin Kaepernick signs a six-year, $126 million extension with the 49ers. $61 million in guarantees. The guy's a rich man, no doubt. And then his deal with Nike is worth millions and millions every year. A lot behind the curtain here, Charles Robinson tweets out in uh, 2018. Nike had Kaepernick since 2011, but they actually got a new deal done by his reps. Nike sat on Kaepernick for two years with no idea what to do with him. Interest from other shoe companies absolutely changed their tune, so they came around. More of that. Okay, so Colin Kaepernick was born in November 3rd, 1987, and they describe him on Wikipedia. I don't like doing the Wikipedia much uh, for sources because it's Garbo, but whatevs. They describe him as an American civil rights activist and former football quarterback. He played six seasons for the San Francisco 49ers in the NFL in 2016. He knelt during the national anthem, and that's what started all this bullshit, didn't it? Thank you, Barack Obama. He was kneeling in NFL games to protest police brutality and racial inequality. Now, <laughs> let me just say that white cops are not indiscriminately and disproportionately killing black innocent unarmed men oh shoot i don't have do i have that i don't have those stats okay quickly because i want to get in uh, out of here it's um let's see well let's go on we'll talk about the crime stats after he was born in milwaukee wisconsin to a 19 year old heidi rousseau who is white his birth father who is African-American of Ghanaian, Nigerian, and Ivorian ancestry and whose identity is unknown, separated from Russo before Kaepernick was born. Russo placed Kaepernick up for adoption at five weeks old, and he was placed with a white couple named Rick and Teresa Kaepernick. The couple have two biological children, son Kyle and daughter Devin. The Kaepernicks decided to adopt a boy after losing two sons, to her DVAX, heartbreaking. He was born, he lived in this town. And if 
we go down to the demographics of this town, you can see that it's 90% white, 2.5% African American. Yeah. He grew up in a white household in a white town, going to white schools as a white man. But now he's black because it's financially convenient. Here's Whoopi Goldberg going off about, <laughs> I can't even do it. I can't do it. Here's the share of uh, players in the NFL in 2020 by ethnicity. Black, Let's. Th they're not African Americans. They're black. African Americans were born in Africa. None of the, <laughs> no, hardly any of the black people in the United States are born anywhere other than in the United States. So just, just call them black, okay? 57.5% point. 57.5% are black. 24.9% are white. Hmm. Do you think that the 0.4% Hispanic or Latino are, uh, are complaining? Or how about the 1.6% of Hawaiian or Pacific Islanders? Do you think they're complaining? How about oh, two or more races? Well, half of these guys down here are two or more races because half of them are half white. Maybe not half of them. Asian, 0.1%. Are the Asians complaining that the NFL is racist because they won't let them into their little black club? No, they're not. Barack Obama gets off. He sits down with Bruce Springsteen, who's a goof. I never liked Bruce Springsteen. But you got... You <laughs> I mean, this is sad and embarrassing, but that's what you get with Barack Obama. So just a short clip here. Bruce and Clans portrayed on stage was essentially a reconciliation, right? Yeah. And redemption. That's right. But most of your audiences were primarily white. And so what if Bruce Springsteen's audiences are mostly white? Who cares? Race baiter. Obama, what a fool, what a grifter. And they can Guy could blow a horn, man. He had some groove, he had some style, he had some game, he could blow that horn. He was great, even though Bruce sucked. He was pretty good. Love Clarence when he's on stage, but if they ran into him in a bar, suddenly oh, uh, yeah. the N word comes up. And look at Bruce Springsteen just agreeing with him. They loved Clarence on stage, but when they met him in a bar, suddenly the N-word comes out. When's the last time you heard a white guy refer to a black guy as the... I should be able to say the word. I've been canceled hard enough. I don't think I could be canceled any further, but I'll just stick with N-word because... Because I'm not black, I can't say that word. Yeah, and part of Bruce's music and part of my politics. Here's a funny thing about looking at these two. Um, notice the skin tone between these two. They're almost the same color. Is anyone noticing this? Well, Barack Obama is only half black as well. As far as I know, Bruce Springsteen is white, but they're both basically the same color. I mean, Obama's got more black features. <laughs> Am I the only one noticing that these guys both look kind of half black? <laughs> Shit, it's, it's bad, it's bad. There's been, no, no, you gotta surface that stuff. You gotta surface that stuff, you gotta talk about it. You, if you don't talk about it, then nothing gets healed because we're a very racist nation. And if you don't talk about how racist we are, and look, Springsteen's just nodding his head, oh yeah, yeah, you gotta talk about the racism and that exists in North America. It doesn't exist, you fools. You gotta talk about it. Sunlight is yeah. the disinfectant. Yeah, what do you, you ha did you poop your pants there, Bruce? Yeah. And if you talk about it, then you can reconcile in a true way, not a, not, right. in a, not in a phony way. Not in a phony way, which is kind of like what you're doing right here. Pulling our leg, trying to convince us we're racist. Okay, we're not racist. Here's the deal. I don't have... I, there is, in the show description, there's a link. Um, I think on the stats. Okay, here's the deal. 
13% of the population in the United States is black. If you divide that in half, because half are men, and men commit all the crimes, and then you take a look and you divide that in half again, because you have to look at the demographic that is committing the most crimes, the most violent crimes especially, its age is at tw- uh, 18 to 25. That's 3% of the population. And that 3% of the population is responsible for a great majority of the violent crimes and murders. In big cities, you can see it 70, 80, 90 plus percent are the single one demographic of 3% of black men aged 18 to 25. So if we want to talk about disproportionality, let's talk about the disproportionate number of crimes committed by this one race and this one demographic aged 18 to 25. Now here's another thing, Colin, you might want to uh, tell your black homies that when they get picked up for a crime, resisting arrest is probably not a good idea. The guys that got shot were hundred percent fatherless and almost a hundred percent of the time resisting arrest or going for the gun of the police officer that shot them this idea of hands up don't shoot is so much bullshit and you've been duped it's gonna be a (laughs) t-shirt and this is a white cornerback yes a white cornerback Troy Apke Apke? Uh, made the Washington football team four years in a row playing free safety the last three years. He wasn't really a household name among among fans around the league. He made Washington's roster again this year. When was this? Uh, Last year, 2021, as as a cornerback. It's the first time in 19 years that a white man has made the regular season roster on a regular football team in the NFL. 19 years, almost two decades. There's, listen, oh, Jason Seahorn was a man. He was the last guy to play corner. Okay, wow, he was good. Even though he was a giant, he was good. You know, the offensive line is mostly white. Why? I don't know, because they're built for it. The cornerbacks are black. For a long time, the quarterbacks were uh, were white, but now we see all kinds of black quarterbacks and mixed-race quarterbacks. I don't see any Chinese quarterbacks. They should probably sue the uh, league, just like Colin Kaepernick did, because... I mean, it's obvious that they're racist and just keeping the Asians away from the position of corner of a quarterback, the most prestigious, you know, position in the NFL. So it's obvious that they they're just you know racist. Anyways, I don't know why I threw this in here. I thought it was interesting. Why did he make the team? This is why. Here's Troy. <laughs> yeah, he's white. Is that a black quarterback there? Cardinals, yeah, of course it is. Yeah, that's a white cornerback. Thank you, Troy. Here's the lies that Black Lives Matter have told you, and you fell for it. And as I did earlier, I'm going to go out with Matt McPherson, want some, and we'll just highlight some of these highlights. Peace, love, hug your neighbor, and whatever you do, take off that mask this song is called want some and the band the title is uh m factor but it's matt mcpherson uh i've interviewed him and we did some show we did a show where we talked about the music this is one of my favorite tunes i will go out to this thanks for watching (laughs) 